1 Samuel 23 and uh, 11. Will the men of Kilad deliver me up, deliver me up into his hand? Will Saul come down as thy servant? Have heard, O Lord God of Israel, beseech thee, tell thy servant. <clears throat> and the Lord said, He will come down. Then said David, Show you the Most High controls this. This is a movie, man. This is the Most High's movie, man. The Most High is controlling everything, man. Then said David, Will the men of of Kila deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, They will deliver thee up. David flees to the wilderness. <clears throat> Then David and his men, which were about six hundred, arose and departed out of Kilah and went whither, whither, whithersoever they could go. And it was told Saul that David was escaped from Kilah, and he forbore to go forth. Yeah, the Lord had David's back, man. David abode in the wilderness in the strongholds and remained in the mountain in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul sought him every day, and Yahweh delivered him not into his hand. So Saul was trying to kill David, man. Multiple times. And David saw that Saul was coming out to seek. And David saw that Saul was, was come out to seek his life. And David was in the wilderness in Ziph in the wood. And Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David into the wood and strengthened his hand in Yahweh. And he said unto him, Fear not, for the hand of Saul. Man, that's hell, man. That's super hell, man. But that's the hell that he had to go through. He had to go through that hell before he sat on his throne, man. That's us in this truth, man. We're catching all types of hell, going against these demons, right? To Lord willing, get that crown of life, man. And Jonathan Saul's son rose and went to David into the wood and strengthened his hand in, in Yahweh. And he said unto him, Fear not, for the hand of Saul my father shall not find thee. And this is his son now. And thou shalt be king over Israel, and I shall be next unto thee. And that also Saul my father knoweth. So Saul knew that David... <laughs> Saul knew that David was going to sit on that throne. And he wanted to kill King David. But the Lord wasn't with it, man. If the Lord is with you, who can be against you, man? And they and, and they too made a covenant. It was, he wasn't like, you know what, Saul? The hell with that. The Lord's with me. I'll take your ass out. The Lord raised me up to kill Goliath, man. He's with me. The Lord said, the Lord delivered you into my hands. So I'm going to take you out. He said, nah, man. I ain't going to take you out no matter what. I'm not going to put hands on you even though you want to kill me. Even though you want to murder me. How many of you brothers in the truth will actually uh, have that mentality if you was in those foots, if you was in those uh, shoes, man, David's shoes? Hmm? That's something to think about, man, to meditate and ponder on. And he said unto him, Fear not, for the hand of my of Saul, my father, shall not find thee, and thou shalt be king over Israel, and I shall be next unto thee. And and that also Saul, my father, knoweth. And they made, they they too made a covenant before the Lord and and... And David abode in the wood, and Jonathan went to his house. They came up to Zip, again came up the Ziphites to Saul to Gibeah, Gibeah, saying, "Doth not David hide himself with us in strongholds in the woods in the hill of Hichila, which is on the south of Jishimon? Jishimon? Now therefore, O king, come down according to all the desire of thy soul to come. Read that again. Now therefore, O king, come down according to all the desire of thy soul to come down." And our part shall be to deliver him into the king's hand. And Saul said, Blessed be ye the Lord, for ye have compassion on me. Go, I pray you, prepare yet, and know I ha and see his place where his haunt is, and who hath seen him there. For it is told me that he dealeth very sub subtly, subtly. See therefore and take knowledge of all and lurking places where he hideth himself. So that's counterintelligence, man. They didn't spy out and come ye again to me with the certainty. So all that spying and shit that you devils are doing on us, that goes back to our ancestors, man. Guess what? The angels are watching you devils, man. The angels got our back. Yahweh, Yahweh, I got the angels to watch over us, the guardian angels, man. You devils ain't doing a goddamn thing. Talk about your Esau and your Rothschilds, man, with your agencies. See, therefore, and take knowledge of all the lurking places where he hide of himself, and come ye again to me with the certainty. I will go with you, and it shall come to pass... If he be in the land that I will search him out throughout all the thousands of Judah. And they arose and went to Ziph before Saul. But David and his men were in the wilderness of Maon. And the plain in, on the plain, in the plain on the south of Jishimon. This is David in the wilderness. Saul also and his men went to seek him. And they, and they told David, wherefore he came down into a rock and abode in the wilderness of Maon. 
And when Saul heard that, he pursued after David in the wilderness of Moon. And Saul went on the side of the mountain, and David and his men on that side of the mountain. And David made haste to get, a, to get away for fear of Saul. For Saul and his men compassed David and his men round about to take them. And there came a messenger unto Saul, saying, Haste thee, and come, for the Philistines have invaded the land. Wherefore Saul returned from pursuing after David, and went, and went against the Philistines. Therefore they called the place Silahamathakoth. And David went from thence and dwelt in strongholds in Igidi. This is when David refuses to slay Saul. Now check this out, man. This was the enemy of King David. And it came to pass when Saul was returned from following the Philistines that it was told him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of Igidi. Then Saul take, took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goats. And he came to the sheep coats, by the way, where it was a cave. And Saul went in to cover his feet. And David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. And the men of David said unto him, Behold, the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine hand, thine enemy into thine hand, that thou mayest do to him. Check this out. Listen to this very carefully. Listen to this very carefully. Behold, behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand, that thou mayest do to him as, shall, as it shall seem good unto thee. And David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privately. And it came to pass afterward that David's heart smote him because he had cut off Saul's skirt. And he said unto him, he didn't kill, he didn't kill Saul. But check this out, man. It goes into it. And he said unto, and he said unto his men, the Lord forbid I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. You see that? And the Lord said, well, that's why the scriptures say David was a man of the most high's heart, man. David was a man of most, he had honor, man. So David stayed his servants with these words and suffered them not to rise against Saul. But Saul rose up out of the cave and went on his way. And David also arose afterwards and went out and went out of the cave and cried after Saul, saying, My Lord, the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David stooped his face to the earth and bowed himself. And David said to Saul, Wherefore hearest thou men's words, saying, Behold, David seeketh thy hurt. Behold, this day thine eyes have seen how the Lord had delivered thee today into my hand in the cave. So he told him, Lord delivered you to me. And some bade me kill thee. So his men was like, yo, kill his ass. Kill that motherfucker. Kill him. That's what they were saying. Kill that motherfucker. Kill him. But my eyes spared thee. And, and I said, I would not put forth my hand against my Lord. For he is the Lord's anointed. Now, how many of you men would have did that? Hmm? That's why you're not David. Moreover, my father, see, yea, see the skirt of thy robe in thy hand, for in that I cut off the skirt, the skirt of thy robe, and killed thee not. I know, killed thee not. Know thou, and see that there is neither evil or transgression in my hand. I have not sinned against thee, yet thou huntest my soul to take it. The Lord judge between me and thee, and the Lord avenge me of, me of thee, but my hand shall not be upon thee. And you, I will never raise my hands on you. Yet honor. I say, if the, I say if the proverb of the ancients, wickedness proceeded from the wicked, but mine hand shall not be upon thee. After whom is the king of Israel come out? After whom dost thou pursue? After a dead dog, after a flea? The Lord, the, the Lord therefore be judge and judge between me and thee, and see, and plead my cause, and deliver me out of thy hand. Doesn't the scripture say that in Romans? The Lord would avenge thee. Don't avenge yourself. The Lord would avenge thee. And what happened later on? Saul got put to death by the... Actually, called Saul put a sword onto himself, man. He said, I'd rather kill myself than, than be dead than let these uncircumcised heathens put their hands on me, man. Die a shameful death from these uncircumcised heathens, man. Saul admits his sin, basically, right now. And it came to pass when David had made an end of speaking these words unto Saul, that Saul said, Is this thy voice, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. He got cut. And he said to David, Thou art more righteous than I. For thou hast rewarded me good, whereas I rewarded thee evil. Doesn't that go back to Luke 6 chapter? Huh? Doesn't that go back to Luke 6 chapter?
For thou hast rewarded me good, whereas I rewarded thee evil. And there has showed this day how that thou hast dwelt, dealt with well with me. For as much as when the Lord hath delivered me into thine hand, thou killest me not. So he said, man, the Lord delivered me into your hands and you still didn't put me to death. Like Saul was all cut. He was all messed up. For if a man find his enemy, will he let him go well away? Wherefore the Lord rewarded thee good for that thou hast done unto me this day. And now behold, this is when David promised us all. And now behold, I know well that thou surely, shalt surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in thine hand. Swear now therefore unto me by the Lord, that thou wilt not cut off my seed after me, that thou shalt not destroy my name out of, out, of, out of my father's house. And David swore unto Saul, and Saul went home, but David and his men got them up and unto the hold. Amen. Going right back to Proverbs 25 and 22. This is what King Saul, when he got cut, If thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap, shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. So you see, David, King David was a man of the most high heart. King David was a very, Malak that was a very special man, man. And now you know why. Why? Because of his actions, man. Yeah, he had his faults, you know. He had his faults. He wasn't perfect. But just that act alone, man, shows you that, man. How many of us would do that? You know? How many of us would? Uh, a lot of a lot of brothers, man, including myself. The first reaction you get when somebody want to take you out, you, I'm going to kill his ass, man. How many of us, if we was in David's shoes, would have took Saul out? Right? But guess what? David is sitting on the throne under Yahweh Shai, the king of kings, man. King David on earth great Luke 6 and 27 but I say unto you which here love your enemies do good unto them which hate you and Saul hated David right bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you and unto him that smite of thee on 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 one on the one cheek offer also the other and him that take of away that cloak forbid not to take that coat also didn't uh, Saul throw the javelin at David huh give to every man the asses of thee and of him that take away thy goods ask them not again and as ye and as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. For ye, for if ye love them which love you, what th what what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thing have ye? For sinners also even do the same. And if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thing have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love ye your enemies and do good and lend. Hoping not for nothing again, and your reward shall be great. And ye shall be the children of the highest, for he, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful, as your fathers also is merciful, man. Attend the mercies of King David, man. And his reward was great. His reward was great. That's what it means when it says he was the man at the most high's heart. So even though Saul threw the javelins and had many attempts and took his men and had to try to assassinate. David many times, David still didn't put his hands on King Saul. Showing you how special, how honorable of a man King David was, man. How honorable he was. And that's the times we're living in. We're living at that time. The Lord's rebuilding the tabernacle of David. Right? So I know I read the whole story, but that's just for you to think and, and seep into your minds, man. You know? Kolo, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai. Shalom to the house of David, the 144,000. Yafta Wada, the Church of the Saints, and the one third men, women, and children, and part of the elect of the total.